I'm Nick D four V I S. Welcome to episode six of Got to Demo Wrong. It's been a long while because of my AP US exam, but now today I think the game is gonna begin as we're gonna I think fall into another civil war. Well, basically fall into another one, but let's get into it. Uh, and so, if you remember last time, we won the Civil War, and now we're going to get orders from the tops. So we're going to get the Burgundian demands, and then we're going to do all this, and we're going to get the true motive of the Burgundian system, which you guys probably know <laughs> is nuking the world. But Hydric, Hydric doesn't know that. He just thinks, like, oh, Himmler just wants an, a racially pure Europe and stuff. Well, actually, that's what the Nazis wanted. <laughs> that's what basically everyone in Germany wants. Uh, but it's more like like Spartanist Europe. But we got orders from the top. We're going to get Burgundian demands. So let's return their supplies. During the outbreak of the Burger Krieg, the Ordenstein funneled us a variety of vital military equipment to aid us in the grand struggle. Now the Reichsführer orders us to return these military supplies immediately from the largest tanks to the smallest food rations. But we're going to get Burgundian demands. Okay, Burgundy demands also some Kazakh stuff. Loyalty to Hero Himmler is more than just simple obedience. It is a way of being, a way of carrying oneself in the world that serves this interests of Burgundy and the Aryan race best. When Hero Himmler suggests we target dissident groups more strongly, we must reorient all structures of the state to utterly decimate traitors of the Reich. When the Burgundians send, send recommendations for the reformation of our state into a nat her natural Aryan structure, we must begin radically restructuring immediately for the good of the Aryan race. Of course, when true co orders come in, we must do more than immediately follow them. We must become disciplined. Our benefactor orders us for the good of our race, and our race is defined by discipline and order. No questions asked, no hesitation. There is no room for that, not in the service of Herr Himmler. We await the request of Herr Himmler. Himmler may now make requests of us. It would be advisable to fulfill them. Okay, we return their supplies. Now let's refill the reserves. The Ordenstadt's reserves have apparently been drained following their intense support for Hydra on the Barger Creek. Reichsführer Himmler has ordered us to send vast amounts of our supplies westward, including fuel. Furthermore, he requires high amounts of manpower for the Ordenstadt, ranging from SS units to army engineers. These transfers will take place as soon as possible. But after that, we'll get our true motive. Okay, right as we got refill the reserves, we have we have some we have some things with Panzer uh, Panzer Grave, Grenader Division Berserker. That's their name. Uh, PGD one active activity has died down through uh, most of northern Germany, but activity in Pomerania has intensified dr drastically. Our forces in Gau Pomerania will face constant harassment, ambushes, and raids. Supply con convoys consistently fail to reach their destinations. Patrols fail to report in, and our reconnaissance effort elements frequently go missing themselves. On the few occasions where our forces have brought PGD one to open battle, the outcome has proven no better. Despite being cut off from major sources. As a supply, they have supplemented their reserves by pillaging our own supplies and being conservative as possible. The result of open battle tends to be that our units suffer heavy casualties on initial contact, then hold position to await reinforcements. While doing so, PGD 1's forces slip away, making gains at our expense alone. The situation in Pomerant has deteriorated to a point where we cannot be certain of the feasibility of continued operations there. Civilian opposition to our authority remains high, in part due to po positive public perceptions of PGD 1. Crackdowns did not work as anticipated. The populace believes that they are protected from us by PGD-1, which may not be an incorrect statement. Our position in Palmer is therefore extremely precarious. PGD-1 has free reign over the entire Gao and will doubtless make use of that advantage. High Hydric, perhaps the North cannot hold. Uh, but now, let's get our, our true motive. After transporting supplies and men alike, communications with the Ordenstein is abruptly halted. Reichsführer Himmler and his subordinates have remained silent for over a week, depriving the Reich Minister f Ministry for Foreign Affairs of any form of contact. Not a single letter or phone call has come through to us, and we have received no further orders. Silence heralds one of two things, the end or the beginning. Hydrix suspects something drastic is underway, but all we can do is wait, and we'll get top secret. 
Oh, and you can see Palmer is demilitarized now. Okay, we have Scout's Honor. It is my sincere wish to serve God in Poland with the whole of my life, to give my willing to help to other people and to obey the guide and the Scout law, because Zemiris Piachowski listened as, their German, as the German pledged the Polish Scout Oath, the DP as she had no oath of their own, so the German members of the network had defaulted to using the Polish one as their code word before meetings. Kazmierz nodded, satisfied with their res recitation. Speak freely, friend. The German was a younger man, and Kazmierz silently reflected on the bravery of his parents to raise such a young rebel. It was one thing to risk your life for people that were not your own, but to raise a child willing to do so in the midst of such Nazi, so much Nazi hatred in the schools and streets was remarkable. Uh, the young German, clearly somewhat frazzled, began to speak. Hey, with, the vi with the victory of Heydrich, many things have changed in Germany. The German civil war has robbed the SS of the ability to maintain control over the overstretch Reich, including Danzig. I, I think that with proper preparations we can make a move, sir. He spoke nervously, as if he was a bit frightened he would be reprimanded. Kazmierz's mind in immediately began to race. He had friends in the Polish resistance, people he had known from his youth, and a few he had seen in the camps. He could contact them for aid. They had risen up while Germany was distracted. Was it so wild, he thought, so implausible for his own networks to do the same? As Kazmierz began to plot and plan his next move, the young German gave the scout salute. Kazmierz, uh, already hardened his heart for the trials ahead, returned it with a smile. You have done well. When all of Europe is free, I'll see a medal on you, friend. The two parted ways, each returning to his home and his family a little bit brighter than he, he was when he had left it. A scout is brave. And I think those are going to be the children of Spartacus. I think they rise up in Prussia. You can see the Iron Heights fact. Funnily enough, Burgundy is not in it. Okay, we got our true motive. Now I think yeah, we have to we have to learn the true motive. Uh, so I'll pause and we'll we'll probably fire right now. But you guys can probably but top secret Germania was a city ever changing Heydrich thought he stood in one of the thousand streets in the world's greatest city and stared into the stone cold face of Hans Speidel the statue had been torn down less than 20 minutes prior one of the exactly 47 monuments torn down in the city that day when one of his men came running in through the still settling dust carefully maneuvering his way through several of his commanders before giving a Fuhrer a sharp salute my Fuhrer he started I tried holding them off but they wouldn't listen I the man struggled to swallow his discipline seeming to fall under Heydrich's emotionless stare Burgundian men sir they just landed the Reichstag sent on Himmler's orders to see you we did not know Heydrich stared at him for a few more seconds before raising his eyes to the rooftops past the milling SS men in the smoke in the rooftops and towards the towering Volkshalle a few miles away and without a word he began walking towards it does good news come on eastern winds top secret the holes in the Volkshalle's dome still gaped wide from the battle with Speedle's traders. The recovery crews have never been given the order to patch them or tear down the entire structure down, and instead of leaving the building looking like its a great dome was poised to collapse at any moment, temporary landing pads have been erupt erected in the Grosser Platz and ordered ferry and construction materials for various projects around the city center, and this is where the Burgundians had landed. Already they had sanctioned off half the plaza space enough for exactly four helicopters to safely land if they, if need be, to themselves and their single vehicle. In front of it stood Werner Grothmann, still as a statue in a perfect SS uniform. Hydra could smell toad as he approached, but said nothing. Grossma Grothmann was close to Himmler and worthy respect for that, if nothing else. Heil Himmler, Heil mein Führer, Grothmann shouted above the helicopter with a proud salute, which Heydrich returned in kind. You could tell immediately that Grothmann was searching for a reaction to the orders of names, but if he wanted one, then he had been disappointed. Heydrich was above the petty politics ambitions of junior officers. Grothmann folded his hands behind his back and looked to his, the Reichstag. I've come to offer you my congratulations, mein Führer. Heil Himmler. Herr Himmler has decided that you are to be informed of several things, he said as his aide handed him a sealed red fo folder. Welcome to the inner circle. Heydrich nodded and reached for the folder, but frowned as Grothman shook his head and hid it behind his back. I've been instructed to serve you while reading the plans and to assist you in the next few days. A private place for a red letter. 
While the folder contained well over 100 pages, and while Grothman's suitcase apparently held hundreds more, the most important part of the plan show could have been summarized in a single sentence, and a show of German professionalism and the cold hearts of the SS that actually was, proudly typed out on the first page after one pushed aside the top secret stamped cover, for the betterment of the Aryan race, for the future of the Reich, for the victory of the Ubermensch over the degenerates, action must be taken to ensure the failures of the past cannot be pre cannot prevent the victories of the future. Heydrich supposed it was a flowery way as to say Himmler's plan was to end the world. Grothmann had not said a word after they had sat down in the dimly lit meeting room besides the order for his aide to hand Heydrich his briefcase. Instead, the man just sat and stared at Heydrich's face, blinking exactly seven times every minute besides one where he only blinked six, in order to see the puppet Fuhrer reacted with horror or awe, and said he got nothing, most likely as he expected, the only noise in the room being the sound of pages shifting under Heydrich's hand. It was broken only when Heydrich looked up, the clock striking four hours past when they had sat down and closed the folder. When do we begin? For a better world. It was seven hours later when Heydrich's day ended. Thirty hours of observing demolition projects, construction projects, raids, negotiations, imprisonments, execution, rallies, musters, formations, planning sessions, and the endless fucking meetings. And after ordering his personal staff, staff out, he was finally alone. He managed to take around 14 or 13 steps, he even cared him more. He, when he re retched on the floor, his good, spartanous dinner stained the carpet as he desperately tried to keep his breath, squeezing watering eyes shut as he his throat burned from the acid he was careful not to make too much noise even as he vomited and especially as he stared at the mess on the floor god forbid a maid's loose tongue land him against a wall while grothman shouts fire when he finished tiling up the carpet and cleaned his uniform he walked to the closest window and stared out from just behind the curtain to watch the helicopters fly in and out with their supplies. He forced his breathing, even forced himself to think analytically. He solved problems, it's what they did, it, it's what he had always done. When he'd nearly been homeless so many decades ago, when he'd been asked to find a solution to Europe's degenerate problem, when he'd been ordered to arrest the fear his fear in the 50s. He found his way through things. It's what he did, damn it. But how was he ever going to stop Himmler? How would he save the world, degenerates and all? A time of action. And you can see the demands begin, the orders are coming in, and there's no question of what the natural conclusion will be. Himmler, with all the resources of Western and Central Europe at his disposal, is committing all efforts towards this end goal, the complete annihilation and destruction of all non-Aryan by extension of the world. For now, we must bid our time until we're ready to act. That means showing complete and absolute loyalty to Himmler, failing to do so not only dooms us, it dooms the world. We must proceed with caution. The great game has begun. Reinhard Heydrich versus the the black beast of all Paris himself, Heinrich Himmler. Okay, we got that. We'll get duck and cover. And then we should move on to the next part of our focus tree. Duck and cover, unbelievable. Heydrich ran his hands through his hair. Massive increases to the nuclear stockpiles. More investments into Burgundy, most bizarre, most costly, were the orders to create new bunker complexes throughout the nation. Before his very eyes, the plan was coming to fruition. Himmler was preparing for the beginning of the end. Heydrich stopped pacing and sat down in an otherwise empty office. Time was running out. A loud, loud ding startled Heydrich. The clock in his office had struck 11. He looked to the clock, then to the order in his hand. There was much work to be done. One hour from 12. Ominous. We must begin work on bunker construction, building up our nuclear stockpiles, or there may be dire, dire consequences. But you can see, this is a fa this is like a trap tree. We're not going to be able to do, like ever finish this, because... We're, we're not going to go along with Himmler's plans. So you guys can read this. You guys can read this. But we'll just start this. And then we will we will descend into like another civil war. It really doesn't matter. But a Spartan's vice. Sitting alone in his office late at night. Heydrich cursed himself for opening the liquor bottle. It was a foolish endeavor and dangerous as well. The German people would learn of this betrayal of Spartanism. They would surely doubt the convictions of their fear. If Himmler knew he would know that Heydrich's heart was already set against him, and any hope of stopping his demented schemes would be dashed, and yet Himmler per remained away in Ost Paris, furthering his own directives in pursuit of the grand plan. How long until he would notice Heydrich's loyalty has begun to wane? How long could the facade be kept up? A year, perhaps, before Heydrich 
Before Himmler's expectations did not match reality, Heydrich thought he glanced disgustingly at the bottle of wine, which was almost empty. Perhaps two years if he kept his base impulses in check. Nevertheless, he refilled his glass. Who could be, he trust to aid him? That was a div difficult question indeed. Himmler's plans were insane, yes, but as Himmler's men were loyal to the fault, they'd been chosen not for skill, but because they believed in Himmler's vision. Heydrich did believe in what vision once in, in that vision once as well, and told Grothman to show them horror at all. Now he is he is, was not certain. He would tell members of his inner circle first to be certain that the, these thoughts were not unique to him. It would have to be Boller, the Alcon, Scheidler, or Gill. He did not trust that others would not run to Himmler, but which of the four would likely be uh, most likely to see the truth and the need to act upon it? He thought at once of Buller, committed national national socialism as national socialist as devoted to the new world order as any man had to Heydrich has ever known. But Heydrich knew that Buller had served on the commission national social socialist literature for a long time. Furthermore, he knew it brought Buller joy to collect all sorts of books, pursuing knowledge where to, wherever he could find it. With all the undiscovered writings scattered across the world, Heydrich could not see the man ever consenting to see all destroyed, not even if, sec if it secured the Reich 1,000 more years. Give me Buller now. I think we'll talk with Buller. I'm trying to convince him, but I think Buller is the head of government. Okay, we got sharing the burden. Buller carefully examined the report, taking a great deal of time to read through it. More than once, Hydra caught him rereading a particular page. The Fuhrer's hand remained pressed against the handle of a desk drawer, where he had stowed a pistol away before arranging the meeting. If Buller betrayed him, or if Buller proved unable to do what was required of him, he would need to be disposed of immediately. Already, he was beginning to see what he thought might be signs of distress in Buller's face. If he even gave a hint of reaction, then it was a mistake to have trusted him. Heydrich thoughts again returned to the pistol. Anyone could ruin it all with a single ward to glance out the pace. Uh, stopping the plan had to come first, and if Buehler proved to be hinder a hindrance, Heydrich had brought the weapon for a reason. Seemingly finished reading, Buehler looked up at Heydrich, his eyes wide and his brow creased in worry and confusion. My Fuhrer, what is this document? He looked at Heydrich, as if desperate to be assured it was all a lie or a joke. Heydrich was on his feet in an instant. Shut your mouth, he hissed, leaning over his dis bespackled man with a look of utter loathing in his eyes. If Himmler catches even a hint of this, we'll both we will both be dead men, with no chance of stopping this. That is, if you if I do not have you shot first for some incompetence, this changes nothing for you. You will act, speak, and think as you normally do until such time as your fear gives you orders to do so. Is that clear? Bueller took a moment to compose himself before nodding yes my Fuhrer. Hydra could see in his eyes that it was still a state of panic, but at the very least he was exercising some amount of self-restraint. You are dismissed. We'll talk more of this when you ever regain your wits. Hydra turned to his seat, watching as Bueller exited a blank expression on his face. Hydra glanced at the drawer and opened and felt a pang of disgust with himself. He'd grown weak. Okay, we got informing the others. Buller had gathered the others in Dielkan's office, where he expected few people would be lingering about. Any meeting in Heydrich's office risked an eavesdropping guard or some self-important official storming into man a meeting with the Fuhrer. Himmler's dogs were becoming ever bolder, even as Heydrich subtly, subtly worked against him at every turn. Thankfully, Himmler was still unaware. Himmler has finally lost his mind, Schreller proclaimed, looking up from Himmler's plan. Heydrich scowled. He had always been the least ideological of them, but the Fuhrer had expected a bit more tact. The outcome looked utterly shaken as well, though he kept his mouth shut. Among his ministers, only Gil only fully maintain his composure, looking calmly to Heydrich for his next orders. Gentlemen, Bueller turned to, Bueller turned to his men, to the men who had just, whether they knew it or not, joined the small cabal of Germans still willing to resist Himmler. He spoke with the same cadence that the German generals had used before Operation Barbarossa. Your Fuhrer needs your help against those who would see the Aryan race rendered decadent. This is a matter that requires utmost secrecy from each of you. The survival of the Reich will depend on it. Heydrich folded his hands up atop the desk. You should be aware. You should all be aware of what needs to be done if we want to uphold the truth and national socialism. With a nod from his Fuhrer, Bueller began to hand each of his fellows an envelope. Heydrich kept speaking. You will find your instructions printed here. Follow them to the letter. If you have a question, re read them again and set them alight when finished. Each man nodded, setting out to accomplish the tasks given. As Bueller waited for his own instructions, Heydrich felt something he had not in a long time. Heydrick felt in control. 
Okay, the last event we'll read before ending this episode. The armies of the Reich. Heydrich hoped that Gil's trust in these men was not misplaced. He felt uneasy around them. The SS military, of course, were men he knew well. Heydrich even respected some of them. Gil's contact in the here, however, seemed to make a mockery of National Socialism and especially Spartanism. Almost all were fat and one had been so bold as to offer Heydrich a cigarette. Gill and Buller were doing most of the talking, something that the Fuhrer was thankful for. They spoke at length about how Himmler planned to bring ruin to the Reich and how Heydrich needed their help to save National Socialism. They did not mention anything about Himmler's true plan as Heydrich's request. These men did not seem to require the no that knowledge to be convinced. They were trying to work with the traitors. These were not men who had seen the madness hiding behind Himmler's veneer of brilliance, but men who seemed to be willing to reject that brilliance at face value. These men did not care for anything that was right in the world, but for what befitted, benefited themselves. How could he justify working with them even for the survival of the world? Heydrich was lost deep and thought about this, having lost track of the long-winded conversation. His head elsewhere, he absentmindedly set his hand against his leg. A sharp pain burned in him, and the Fuhrer winced. Bueller looked back frantic. My Fuhrer, are you alright? Heydrich dismissed him with a wave and an annoyed glare that had only served to draw attention to it. As Gil and Bueller resu resumed their pl pleas, Heydrich stared at the now-crushed cigarette in his hand, its mark still throbbing against his leg. It accepted without a thought when a year ago he would have in instantly thrown it to the ground and ordered these officers shot. It was Heydrich to doubt the integrity of others when he had been rejecting the Spartan way for weeks. Across the room, Gil came to a deal, but next episode, I think the game will begin.